Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Venom Vlog and we are here with episode 349. And this is going to be, and I actually had to redo, uh, redo this episode because uh, I was messing with my settings last time and I kind of screwed it up. So I apologize for it being late because uh, this was supposed to, originally supposed to be episode 347. Uh, but I was like, you know what, I'll have more time. I can reshoot it and then I can kind of reread the book and kind of see more of what's going on. Because I'll be honest with you, I'm not a huge fan of Venom 2099. I know he's made some other appearances beyond the, you know, the version we're going to talk about today, which is his origin, but I thought the origin wasn't handled very well. Uh, I thought the story, I love Peter David. I think his stuff overall is really great. And during this time of Spider-Man, especially the 2099 stuff, I was really digging 2099, but I felt like Venom just wasn't done uh, that well. I felt like there was a lot of like, uh, you know, vague storytelling and, and loopholes and, and not really plot holes either, just things that weren't explained just for the sake of I don't know, not explaining him. So I didn't really ever get on board with Venom 2099. I do like the look. Uh, Andrew Wildman drew him, and he did him very well. I like the design very well. But when you find out who Venom is and kind of peel back the layers, it's not as interesting as I feel like it, it could have been or might have been. They try to build up not even a mystery of who it is, because that would be one thing if they were like, oh, it's a mystery of who the new Venom host is. But they don't. They kind of hit you with it right at the end, uh, out of nowhere. You think it's just the suit acting as the suit because it's like able to just you know worm its way through things and like in the sewer it's just coming out as like a blob and it breaks itself apart and comes back together so you're like there's no way there's a human host in there and then when they reveal there is and they explain why you're kind of like okay so so i felt like the story would have had more weight in it um if maybe you know you you knew there was a host in there but at the same time I also understand why they did it because there's when they reveal there's a host that's the big turning point for Miguel where he's like I don't want to be a killer because he wants to kill this Venom and uh, you know and I know that sounds weird because like hey it's a Spider-Man comic why does he want to kill him well you know tragic things happen and you know Spider-Man wants to kill this Venom but when he finds out there's a human inside he's like all right I can't do it so on one level I understand from a story standpoint why it's there and why they don't tell you the host uh, but also because they don't tell you there's a host you don't feel any attachment to this Venom the thing that makes Eddie Brock so you know fascinating to a lot of us is that we liked Eddie Brock you know the suit is cool and it looks amazing and visually it's outstanding but beyond the visuals there is something there there is some substance there there's a character that we can all like and in this case there's not uh, a Cron Stone who is you know Venom is not that very interesting of a character and if you don't know who that is let me just set up real real quick the world of you know Spider-Man 2099 which is obviously it takes place in the year 2099 uh and it that was the longest year in history because not, it never went into the year 2100 which a lot of us kept thinking it would do eventually uh, but it never did so uh, it's just always stuck in the year 2099 it's a perpetual year that never ends it has you know four million days in that year and it's never going to end um so what happens in it is miguel o'hara is the spider-man of the future and he's kind of like a tony starkish he comes from a rich father tyler stone um they you know have he has like political ties and a lot of money he's tied to, to dr doom in some ways as well and dr doom in the future in the year 2099 is great because it's actually victor von doom which is amazing i love that book that whole run peter david i believe also did it was fantastic uh but there's also other characters there's an x-men of the year 2099 there's a ghost rider of the year 2099 um a hulk uh, uh rampage i think or Ravage was a Ravage I think it was Ravage uh, and then also there was uh, Punisher and that's kind of where Cron Stone begins in Punisher 2099 it's about a guy named Jake Gallows and Jake Gallows's family gets killed and he finds out that the person who ordered the hit on his family is a guy named Cron Stone who is the half-brother of Miguel O'Hara an older brother too of Miguel O'Hara so Miguel O'Hara has a you know a, he has a real brother named Gabriel who becomes the Green Goblin, I know, right? Very convenient storytelling. All of his family members are bad people, <laughs> essentially. Although Green Goblin or Goblin is kind of a good guy in the year 2099. But his brother Gabriel becomes a Goblin. But his older brother, uh, their half-brother, Cron Stone, he's the son of Tyler Stone and a different woman than the one Tyler Stone had, um, you know, Miguel and Gabriel with. So, uh, so they're real brothers, and Cron Stone is a half brother, and he was abused basically by their holographic uh, housekeeper, you know, robot housekeeper, or android housekeeper, um, you know, in the future, and that it it mistook, I guess, Cron for a dog in a way, or like it it it's, I guess, programming uh, didn't see it as a child. And it abused him whenever the parents weren't around. And so Kron grew up kind of cruel and, and kind of evil and ended up getting part, you know, twisted into Tyler's like a more 
uh, dark side of his political career and, and the, the ties he had and the money they were making. And uh, Kron kind of became a goon in a way for his own father. And so then when he branched out on his own and tried to do his own things, ended up getting the Punisher's family killed. So the Punisher stabs Kron, I think in issue two or three of Punisher 2099, he stabs Kron in the stomach and dumps his body into the sewer. And you just assume that Kron is dead after that. But what we find out in this run uh, Venom 2099 is that, uh, or Spider-Man 2099 meets Venom, you find out that Kron's body washed down into the sewers and it landed near the symbiote, which for some reason was left down and struggling to survive in the sewers all these years, ever since the days of Spider-Man and stuff, like from, you know, present day. And so, uh, so you don't really get a big explanation of how the suit ended up there. Again, more convenient storytelling in a way, kind of corner cutting and I'm sure there was great ideas because Peter David is a great writer I'm sure there was ideas to further it more and get more detailed but it just never ended up happening the, the series got canceled soon after this I think issue 46 was the last issue of Spider-Man 2099 and this all happens from issues 35 to 38 and the real bummer is they put all this and the reason I'm talking about it now is because I, they, they re-released it in trade and you guys know I like to mostly review the stuff that has been put out in trade and now a lot of the stuff has a lot of the Venom stuff is now out there in some form again in trade paperback or omnibus form so uh, I was like great I can talk about this but the problem is is the episode or the issue issue where they explain that it's Kron Stone and his backstory and how he ended up with the symbiote. All that stuff is in issue 39, which happens after this issue. And issue 39 is not put in the trade paperback that came out recently. So all this, all these answers, all the stuff I'm giving you and the connection to Punisher and all that, you're not going to see any of that. And, that. and that's what makes me so frustrated about this trade paperback. It comes out and it's issues 34, which is the issue before um, all this happens, where Doctor Doom makes an offer to Miguel O'Hara. Spider-Man says, hey, you can come work for me. Uh, I have a position for you. And so that's that issue, issue 34. And then 35 to 38 is the Venom arc. But 39 is technically the conclusion of it, where you find out who Venom is. So this ends on a cliffhanger of Spider-Man going, it's you. And you're like, who is it? So if you buy the trade, it ends on a cliffhanger. It's so frustrating. It's uh, it's very poorly put together, this trade paperback. Um, they also include the issue uh, Spider-Man 2099 meets Spider-Man of present day. And I would do a whole review or a whole episode on that. But Venom's only in it for a couple pages, so it's not really worth talking about. I would say it's a great read, and it's part of this trade paperback called, you know, Spider-Man, I think it's called Venom, Spider-Man 2099 versus Venom 2099, and they released it as a trade paperback, and they put the Spider-Man and Spider-Man 2099 special in there uh, that I think they put in one of the annuals or one of the unlimited issues, and then they also put in uh, issues 34 through 38 of Venom, which again isn't even the whole arc, because at the end it has Miguel standing over Venom trying to, you know, getting ready to kill him, and then the suit, you know, peels off him, and you reveal that it's Kron Stone, but you don't see the Kron Stone part. That's in issue 39. Uh, it just ends with Miguel going, you? Uh, you know, and that's it. And so when you buy this trade, I feel like you're getting gypped. You're getting gypped out of one issue that could have made all the difference and made it more of a complete storyline. And so for the trade, if I was reviewing the trade right now, I would give the trade a very low score because of this reason. It's a very mishmashy put together trade. Um, and, you know, they're putting all the Spider-Man 2099 stuff in trade paperback and they have volumes one through four out already. Uh, but I felt like each book that comes out is worth less the price because they're they're $34.99 I think uh, cover price for the trade paperbacks but volume one has 10 issues in it and volume two has like six issues or seven issues in it I'm like what the heck are you paying for you're paying the same price for less content and then the third one has I think 10 issues technically but three of them are unlimited issues where you're just getting like pages from those issues you're not even getting the full issues so you're not even getting 10 full issues in that trade so it's it's frustrating and they did like the war of the hammers crossover so that one's a pretty good value 34.99 i think you get like 11 books in that trade but volumes two and four you get less and then even this is also i think another 20.99 or 29.99 or 34.99 price point on the spider-man versus uh 29.99 venom and that volume has issues 34 through 38 but that's five issues and then one special and then one like other random issue so again you're getting like seven books for the same price as the volume one which had 10 issues in it uh so it's just i don't know these trades are not done very well i'm glad they're doing them at least uh i guess that means if they do the final trade with the goblin 2099 it'll be one more trade and in six volumes you'll get all of the spider-man 2099 arc i guess i hope they keep doing them i hope they keep making them 
but I can't imagine they're selling well, not at those price points. I think it's kind of a jip, and especially when you don't even get the full story in the first trade. So, uh, so the issue, I mean, and I want, and I know some of you are like, well, talk about the story. What happens in the story? There's not much of a story in this either. That's the frustrating part because all the interesting stuff of finding out who the, who's in the symbiote and all that is in issue 39, which is not put in the trade paperback. Um, so all we get here is the issue where, you know, Doom makes that offer to Spider-Man. Then we get that special where Venom shows up for a few pages. So it's basically Freaky Friday. Spider-Man 2099 and Peter Parker, or Miguel and Peter Parker, they switch timelines. So Peter ends up waking up in the future talking to his hologram, or Miguel's hologram in the future, and Miguel wakes up in the past laying next to Mary Jane going, whoa, what's going on? And by the way, just some vocabulary for you uh, for the future. The two swear words are uh, click, uh, where people go, click you. That's a swear word in the future. And shock, that's the most prominent one where you go like, holy shock, you know, like something's happening to you. You, you usually yell that word out in the future. So that dialogue gets used a lot. So when Miguel wakes up next to Mary Jane, he goes, what the shock? And uh, yeah, so that's the kind of uh, <laughs> dialogue they came up with for future people to talk in. Um, so anyway, so uh, so Miguel in the, the special he switches place with Peter Parker, and there's a scene at the end where he's fighting Venom, just randomly. Venom shows up, and he's like, Spider-Man, I don't care if you're in a new costume or if you're another clone, I'm going to fight you. And then they fight a little bit, and then when Miguel starts to get the upper hand, or Venom starts to get the upper hand, uh, a portal opens, and two more Spider-Men from the future jump out. And then Venom goes, what? Three Spider-Men? I'm out of here. And he leaves. So he's literally only in the book for like five pages, if that, and he's just throwing punches. So it's not even really worth doing a whole episode based on just that, that crossover issue. It's here in this trade. If you want to read it, check it out. Um, it's, you know, the trade overall, I would say buy, but buy it at a discount or buy the Comixology, you know, digital version or something. I would say don't pay full price for this trade. I don't think it's worth it, especially when it doesn't even give you the final chapter of the story, which is really frustrating because all it gives you is four, you know, basically issues where Venom just keeps kidnapping the women in Spider-Man's life. So he's his half brother, you know, he's Spider-Man's half brother, but he wants to kill their father. And like I said, Tyler's been incapacitated and that job has been offered by Doom to Miguel O'Hara now. So Miguel is trying to think if he's going to follow in his father's footstep and work for Dr. Doom, you know, of the future. And he's debating on whether he's going to do that or not. But meanwhile, he's kind of rich and he's got, you know, Tony Stark like, you know, tower and stuff. And he has a hologram like Jarvis style that he talks to, this woman that he talks to. And she helps him with his suit and everything and designing stuff. And uh, and it's cool. It's a neat setup. It's like she's, he's got his own Cortana in a way. And he's like Master Chief from Halo. It's really, really cool. Um, but, you know, the book is basically, you know, Dana, who's this like very special woman in his life. And this other girl, like who's like, there's like a love triangle going on. They get kidnapped by Venom. And that's pretty much all it is. Venom shows up. He kills a couple random people. Um, he Then he sees Spider-Man. He goes, wait a minute. I know who you are. We hate you. Like, don't you remember us? And, and Miguel's like, I don't know what the hell you are, dude. Um, and he's like, uh, yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. And then meanwhile, the symbiote remembers a Spider-Man and it sees Miguel. And it's like, hey, we're going to kill you. We don't care what Spider-Man of what era you are. We hate Spider-Man and we're going to kill you. And so he, he also wants to ruin Miguel's life. So on a personal level, he doesn't know Miguel is Spider-Man yet, uh, but he, you know, was like, all right, well, I'm after Miguel. I'm here after Miguel, and Spider-Man showed up, so I'll kill Spider-Man, but I also want to ruin Miguel's life because he has the life that I should have been given pretty much by my father. Uh, he's got the life that I've wanted, so I'm going to kill him. So he takes the women in his life, kidnaps them, and he threatens to kill them, and he spends a long time, he spends a lot of time wasting. Like, he's wasting a lot. You're like, wow, he could have killed them in, like, one page, and he doesn't do it. And the way they end up dying is the police show up who look like Judge Dredd characters, uh, and they work for Dr. Doom, who's the president now at this point in the comics. Doom is president of the United States. Um, it's great stuff, I'm telling you. Doom 2099, amazing stuff. Uh, anyway, so he's president of the United States, and he sends his Judge Dredd troopers to take down Venom because Sp Spider-Man's been like you know incapacitated temporarily, and he's also trying to figure out the suit, and they got a sample of it, and they're bringing he brings it back to his company at Alchemex, and he's trying to figure out what's going on and uh, what what makes the suit tick and everything. And then Spider-Man has these women out there. He takes them. He's getting ready to kill them, but then the police show up and start shooting at Venom, and the bullets go right through him, and he's like, "Yep." I'm, I can turn my body into a sponge. I can be anything, everything, all your bullets go right through me, but don't worry. There's someone standing right behind me that caught all your bullets. And you find out that Dana, you know, like I said, the woman that, uh, Miguel was in love with, uh, she gets riddled with bullets 
And uh, they've been broken up now. They've kind of become friends and kind of rekindling their relationship in a way. But like I said, there's a love triangle going on. But uh, when Spider-Man sees this, he shows up and he's holding her in her dying moments. And she says, you know, I'm so glad all those years ago when we were dating, I asked you to shave and you never did. It, it was so nice to see that you've actually shaved and, and that you're, you know, very handsome. And I'm sorry if things didn't work out with us. Uh, I remember when you when you wouldn't shave and you kissed me you know, it tickled. And then, and then and it was like, those were her like last thoughts were happy memories with him. It was a pretty good emotional scene. I liked it overall. Um, I, it meant a lot to Miguel. And it, but it's, of course, it's that standard story trope of we got to kill the girl so that the hero can be the hero or whatever. And you're just like, oh, well, at least this time it was an ex-girlfriend and not really like his current girlfriend, even though there were still feelings there. Um, but it sends Spider-Man on a murderous rampage and he wants to kill Venom. But when he tracks him down, he's, he finds out, he starts, he goes to the lab at Alchemist and he sees the suit sample and he starts screaming at it i hate you you killed dana i hate you so much and as he's raising his voice and yelling at it he sees the suit is reacting to it so they decide to amplify the sound in the room and it weakens the symbiote almost destroys it and so he's like okay now we know how to kill this guy through sound he's like so let's put some of my money to the test and let's flush out venom so what he does is venom's terrorizing downtown and he's you know doing all these things and then so what uh, miguel o'hara does is he hacks into the system using his hologram and the technology they have and they hack into the system of the city and the satellites and everything and they turn everyone's cell phone on every every tv on and it's all submitting this high-pitched noise that's irritating Venom. And so Venom just falls off his skyscraper, hits the ground, and he's he's weakening, and he's screaming. And people are like, oh, my God, he's here, he's here. So Spider-Man's able to, like, pinpoint his location. He goes there, and as the suit's melting off him, Miguel is just wailing at him, just ready to kill him. Just He's ready. He's like, you took away Dana. You took away a good person, someone who did a lot of good for this world, who I loved at one point in my life and still had feelings for, and not only, you ruined her. Like, you ruined, you know, my life by taking her away. And you ruined a lot of other people's lives because she was actually trying to do some good in this world. And uh, and now she's gone. So I'm I'm here to kill you now. And then when he starts, you know, he's about to kill him, he sees the suit actually dripping away and revealing Cron Stone underneath. And again, the book ends literally, like I said, I would love to talk about issue 39. And we'll talk about it a little bit here because I don't want to jip you guys off the ending of the storyline. Uh, but uh, yeah, here you see it just ends with him going, wait you your venom and then that's it and then it goes back and tells like these little flashback stories of, of miguel when he was a little kid with his brother uh, gabriel and stuff uh and their, and their father tyler but what happens the next issue is they set up the green goblin storyline in this that's the other thing is uh, peter david was juggling a lot he was like almost like he knew the book was ending so he's like all right we got to get through venom we got to get through goblin we got to get through these things before the book ends and they didn't even get to issue 50 which was frustrating i think it ended on issue 46 so um yeah that happens to peter david a lot his books kind of get taken away from him because of low sales which is a bummer because i think he's actually a really good writer but then when the books do get canceled he i feel like he kind of phones in stuff from then on out he's like yeah the book's going away i don't i don't really care i don't know if that's true or not it just comes across that way in the writing style because this book started off really good and when it got to the venom arc i was like i don't care about cron stone i don't care about I, that's an interesting twist in a way but i don't care overall um i would have rather something different i mean it is personal sure i guess you want when you're translating a character like we got to do a new version of venom i guess we'll do the version like we got to have a personal hatred the way eddie brock hates peter parker but i think they could have done it in so many different ways other than just bringing in cron stone uh because he's very forgettable and and for that reason i'm not a big fan of venom 2099 i like his look sure but i don't care about the person underneath and i know the suit went on to like be part of like Namar or Ramen or whatever the Submariner of 2099 was. It went on to join him at one point, and there's still the little sliver at Alchemex, so there's still plot threads there that they could touch on with other books, and I think they did with Peter David's second attempt at Spider-Man 2099 with, uh, you know, that came out a couple years ago. Um, but uh, n nothing sticks. Like, Venom 2099 just doesn't stick in my head as a, fa a favorite of mine, uh, you know. Actually, this this episode I was kind of like reluctant to do because I don't have a lot of positive things to say about the storyline and it's a bummer because I love Peter David I respect his body of work so much but this trade is a poorly put together trade they don't even have the ending in it which is really frustrating uh so you read this whole trade thinking who's Venom who's Venom and then you get to the end it says to to be continued you're like why it's a trade 
a trade shouldn't say to be continued at the end of this unless it's like you know uh collecting the clone saga or, or nightfall or something big like that but it's like dude it's one more issue why didn't you guys just include it especially at that price point it's so stupid so uh so yeah i'm not a fan i'm really not a fan of this stuff uh, but i want to hear what you think you know like i said i wish i could talk more in detail about the story but there is no story in this it's pretty much just cutaways to like goblin set up for the next story arc and then Doom stuff for the Doom storyline, and then Miguel, you know, chasing down Venom, who has kidnapped two women from his life, and that's pretty much the plot of these four issues. It's pretty boring overall. There's not a lot of meat there uh, to talk about, which is why I, I talked about everything else in this episode besides just the four issues. I needed to fill this episode with something and tell explain the universe at least a little bit too. So uh, yeah, I'm not a big fan of it. And that special, it's it's a fun special with Miguel and Peter switching spots. But you only get like five pages of Venom, so and he just there to be like a, a thug to punch at Spider-Man 2099. So it's not even really worth talking about that either. Um, you know, for Venom story's sake, it's not worth talking about. But it is fun to read. And if I would say if you buy this trade, just buy it at a discount. You try to get it 50% off or get it for like 20 bucks on Amazon. Because then at least you won't feel completely gypped by the ending, not having the final issue in there. Knowing that you have to buy another trade uh, that focuses on the Goblin even uh, in the next trade. So it's like... Come on, you couldn't just put that one last issue in this trade. It's so frustrating. Um, so for that reason, I hate the trade, definitely. Uh, and I hate Marvel's decision on that big time. Uh, but these issues stand alone. I don't know. They're fine, I guess. But they're they're not very memorable to me as a Venom fan. Uh, I don't sit around thinking how much I love Venom 2099. Uh, and I don't really care to read any more stories about them. It's not one of those characters where I'm like, ooh, they, there's potential there. I want to see more with it. I don't see potential with this character either uh, at all. And I thought the way they handled him was very convenient. Him being in the sewer, the suit being in the sewer, and seeing Kron in there and everything. It's like, it's all convenient. It's all boring. It developed new powers, I guess. It, it made Kron spit acid while it was down in the sewers festering. I'm like, dude, it's in the sewers. Why didn't you bring back the Venom, the Madness thing and have it like find those life form things again that it bonded with and become mad again or something like it's like there there are plot threads they could have done to tie it to modern day comics at that time in the 90s and they and they didn't do it uh they just went a completely lazy route in some ways uh so I, yeah so i'm bummed by that but yeah it had new powers it can spit acid and then when it bonded with Kron, it completely morphed his body so he could move like the symbiote so that's why in the first four issues you didn't think there was a human host because it could sliver in ways that a human's body couldn't break down bone wise to like sliver through but apparently it can now it did develop new powers living in the sewers all these years so i don't know but like it was pretty lazy but the, the acid stuff was kind of neat because there was a couple moments when miguel or spider-man would punch you know venom and when he got punched him so hard or cut him to where it would bleed uh there would be acid on his fingers that he was like it was like burning his skin so that added something new to it i guess but overall kind of boring in my opinion but let me know what you think this has gone long long enough i rambled long enough about venom 2099 but i wanted to make this a meaty issue or episode to talk about uh to get my thoughts out there and talk about the world of 2099 uh, so if you're familiar with it uh, you know let me know down below what your favorite parts of the 2099 universe were and if you aren't let me know what you think of this will you give it a shot like i said it's worth buying if you can find it i think the, when the the trade paperbacks of these go on sale on comiXology they're usually like 5.99 I would say it's worth $5.99, definitely. Uh, especially knowing you're going to get gypped on the ending. Don't pay full price for this. Don't give Marvel the satisfaction of, of, of gypping you of the actual ending of the story, which is really frustrating. Um, you know, I hate that so much. So, you know, don't do that. <laughs> don't support it if you can. Uh, of course, when I say, hey, don't buy this, um, that means if this book doesn't sell, the next one won't come out and that's unfortunate but marvel you really should have put issue 39 in here i think you gypped people by not doing that so for that reason the trade i would say don't buy it at full price buy it on sale and the book itself though read it if you're interested uh if, you know don't take my word for it this is just my opinion obviously you'll probably have a different one uh, but those of you out there who do have read it and have a different opinion let me know in the comments below and if you have the same opinion let me know down below and as always we'll continue our conversation down there that's it for me on this episode. I can't talk about 2099 anymore. The next episode, 350, another milestone for the show. Thank you guys for being subscribed and for following us. Uh, we will give away 31 digital codes in the next episode because it's 31st anniversary of Venom. Last year in May, we celebrated 30 years of Venom. This year, we're celebrating 31. So I wanted to make sure I had 31 codes to give away. So I have 31 random Marvel books. And the next episode, we'll just talk about something. I don't know yet, but we'll talk about it. 
and uh, and then we will share those codes. And probably in episode 351, uh, we will talk about the absolute carnage stuff that was announced at the Diamond Summit this past weekend with all the tie-ins and who's writing each book and all those and who's drawing each tie-in. We'll talk about all that in episode 351. So that'll be another news episode. But the next one, we'll do something fun. I'll try to figure something out to talk about and we'll give away a bunch of codes. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on that. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.